everything. Hey guys, today we are back in Solo Learn uh, JavaScript, doing conditionals and loops. Let's go ahead and drive through here. We have the if statement. These are conditional statements that if it evaluates to true, it, it does the code on the inside. So we're saying if, and uh, we have to contain our if statement like so, and then or our statement, and then where it's going, the code that's going to run with our brackets. What happens is a condi con tested condition is false. Nothing happened. Uh, that's basically it. Let's see here. The if else statement. So if this fails, do this. The else statement will always run if all the if fails. Uh, if the if all the ifs fail. So the else statement is created to ignore the tell JavaScript. There you go. Tell JavaScript to execute if something is true. Um, so let's go on here. Uh, fill in the blanks to have a valid if else statement. So you always start with an if else never comes before. That's basically the point of this right here. It's saying if age is greater than 18, run this. If it's not, run this. That's all that's going on here. The if else else if statement. So if you had multiple ifs, each if statement would run. Now, if you want one if to run and only run the else if, if this one fails, that's what we use an else if for. The keyword is used to end the else if statement. So else will end it. Else is always the final one, guys. Um, let's see here. The final else block will execute when none of the conditions are true. All right, let's continue moving on. So fill in the blanks to create a valid if else if statement. So we have an if statement, else if, because the first if has to fail, and finally an else. These are the orders that if you're going to do an if else if statement. The switch statement. So the switch statement is when you know what your values are going to be. You pa you pass in the variable you're checking or the statement that you're checking, and then you're checking the answer with the case. So switch the switch statement can be used to replace multiple if else statements. So you don't want to have a ton of if if else 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 all this sort of nonsense. So you can use the switch statement instead. So you'll see right here, case one, case two, case three. So this is each case and the value of the case we're checking. So if day is one, write out Monday and then break. You always have to put a break. And this default is like our else for our switch statement where if all of them fail, go ahead and um, go ahead and go forward. How many case statements are usually used in the switch statement? One for each possible answer is usually the answer. Now you can have multiple case statements for a single, or multiple outputs for a s multiple answer, or for multiple answers for a single output is what I was trying to say. Um, what is the output of this code? So x is three, so we're checking three with our switch statement, and then uh, it's not one, it's not two, so it has to be our default, so it's x plus five, which is eight. Nice. Uh, the default keyword specifies code to run the no mat match statement, exactly like an else, right? No match is found is when the default is ran. The for loop, you have, uh, that's where they put statement one, statement two, statement three, and that's not really. Uh, the for loop has three components. That is correct. That go inside the for loop. Uh, you have your iterator, you have your statement, and then you have your increment. So, let's go in here. so when you want to start a for loop, use the word for. And then you have to put a, a oops, semicolon. What did I do here? What happened? So this is a semi. Let's go ahead and refresh this page real quick. Oh, it jumped us out of there. For loop. All right, here we go. So uh, you need a for loop, and the semicolon will end the. Uh, the break statement, and then of course the brackets for which we want our code to run in the for loop. Now fill in the blanks to print even values from zero to 20 using a for loop. So you don't only have to increase by one. Typically you will most of the time, uh, but you don't have to. So you'll see var x is zero. So we've already set zero and we're saying y x is less than, this is a weird way to write this, but you can write it like this. While x is less than or equal to 20, 
we want to increase x by 2. And that will print us out 2, 4, 6, 8, all the way to 20. So the while condition is when you don't really know how long, many times it's going to iterate, and then you want to break, right? And so uh, once you hit the value you're looking for, it's always a Boolean value. So you're always evaluating if it's a Boolean or not. So until the while evaluates the false or not false or true or not true, it's going to always be running. Uh, which is a great way if you're an inexperienced programmer to get yourself in a infinite loop. Uh, so we're going to do a while loop. So we're saying while x is less than or equal to 5, go ahead and uh, what do we want to do here? x is equal to, is this what we're going to do? I think that's what we want to do. So we want to add it. It's like, didn't really tell us to add x to itself, but kind of made the assumption. How many times will a while loop run if we remove the counting variable increment statement? So if you don't, if you remove the increment, it's going to run an infinite amount of times, which is why people do this accidentally, and then they crash their code pin or something. <laughs> the do while loop. The only difference between a do while loop, other than the setup, is the do while loop will always run one time, even if this while, even if this right here starts off as false. That's the only difference between do while loop and a while loop. Break and continue. The break statement jumps out of a loop and continues executing, executing the code after the loop. So say you already get your value in your if statement and you don't. there's no reason for you to iterate, to continually iterate. You can use a break statement to save processing time to save, uh, so things load faster. And this is actually really crucial. And you'll use this for a lot of things as well. Um, ends the execution of the loop. There you go. Cool. All right. And let's see. The continue statement will continue to the next iteration of the loop without, uh, will continue to the next iteration and forget the rest of the thing. So uh, what is the output of this code? So if i is equal to 6, we skip that. Uh, so sum is i is equal to 4. Uh, so sum is equal to 4 plus 5. When i is equal to 6, we skip it. And then we do 7 and 8. So uh, 9, 16, and uh, 22. Is that right? Or is your boy bad at math? No, your boy's bad at math. So 4 plus 5. <laughs> Uh, four plus five, and then uh, oh, it's less than eight. So it wasn't. What's twenty-two minus uh, eight is sixteen. Seven plus yeah, sixteen. There we go. Sorry, uh, I saw this was less than or equal to. Cool. Uh, and let's go on to our quiz. What is the output of the following code? So we have a variable x here. It's set to zero, and we're saying while x is less than six, go ahead and run this. And so it's going to be five. Oops. It's going to be six. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Because uh, it doesn't run on the sixth time. Whoops. Uh, please fill in the right keywords to test the condition. So we're using a switch statement here. And we're checking. Okay, say, and this is what I was talking about where you could have multiple values uh, that all have the same output. So if it's one, two, three, four, or five, it's going to say working days. And then we can, we need to break it when that does it, so it breaks the case statement. And same thing with case six, where we break it here as well. And then finally, please fill in the right keywords to compose a loop. Uh, oh, so this is a do while loop. We put the statement at the end like so. So that wasn't too bad. That was our conditionals and loops in JavaScript. I think it was about 10 minutes. So obviously, I'm, I, I've used JavaScript before, so I'm a developer in it. It may take you a little bit longer, but uh, it did cover all the basics, I would say, of conditionals and loops. It didn't really leave too much out. But as always, guys, I appreciate you watching the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share, and support me on patreon.com slash codingtutorials360. I appreciate it. See you guys in the next video. Special thanks to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. If you're interested in a coding boot camp, why don't you check them out where they include housing alongside their tuition so you can get up, go, and immerse yourself in the environment. If you want to support me, go over to patreon.com slash codingtutorials360 so we can put out more content. Thanks for watching.